So in this video, I'm actually walking through performing an update of a cluster. So I'm going to fire off the cluster we're updating and you can see all the different actions on that right hand side. So it's doing a quick check of the current status. And now what I'm going to actually do is do a check to see, well, what patches are available. So I'm going to say preview updates for this cluster. This is going to tell each node in the cluster to, hey, go and do a check using the Windows Update plugin. So it's going to go and scan, find what updates are available for each of the nodes and then report it in this dialog. So here are all the updates that apply to both the nodes in the cluster. You can see it shows me the node name and the update ID and the title. So I'm going to apply them. So I click apply updates to this cluster action and it's just going to use the existing settings I've already configured using the self updating. It's showing me the PowerShell so I can copy and paste this somewhere else if I want to use it in the future in my own scripts or orchestrator and then run update. So I can monitor it now through this screen or I can close this opening up on another box to check what's actually going on. And now it's showing me what's going on for this update run. And it's going to log all of that in this dialog. So it's going to pick the box with the fewest number of workloads on it. So that's FCO2. And now it's downloading those updates. Now, when it did show me those initial list of updates, those were just the updates that it could find that applied right now. Now, remember, once you apply updates, it's very common that you'll now see a second load of updates apply. So right now I have two resources spread over the two boxes. So it's actually going to do multiple passes. So it's downloading them. Now it's installing that initial batch of updates. It's putting the box in maintenance mode, which means it's going to have automatically moved that workload between the boxes. So the workload that was on FCO2 would now have moved to FCO1. And there we can see that's happened. So it's put it into maintenance mode, moved all the resources off, applying the patches. Now it's going to restart. I'm actually going to bring this tool up on the other node now. So now I'm on the other box. You can see it's basically kicking off the log from when I initiated this instance of the cluster or update in wizard. I can see that node is still down, it's rebooting and the roles are still going to be sitting on FCO1. So now because the FCO2 is back up and running, but it's paused, it's not used, it's not being used for cluster workloads yet because it's in, installed those initial patch of updates. Now it's going to scan again. It's going to say, well, are there any others that now apply because I installed those other ones? And yes, there are. So it's downloading them. It's going to repeat that process again downloading them, then it's going to install them, then it's going to reboot, then it's going to scan again. And only when it finds no more patches that apply, will it now say, okay, I'm done. So it's going to reboot the machine. You can see it's gone down again. Now you can see it's back up. We're going to see it perform the scan, but this time it won't find any more updates. It's gone through twice. So it's scanning for updates. and it's not found any. So it's taking it out of maintenance mode. It's saying the update run completed successfully on that box. Now it's gonna go on, it's moving the coordinator for the cluster we're updating to that box so it can now download updates on FCO1. Now what it would have done is moved that service back, that resource that it moved off of FCO2 to FCO1, it would have put it back. So you can now see it's back to FCO2, so it, so it fails it back. Now it's gonna repeat that process. It's going to download them. It's going to now put it into maintenance mode to FCO1. So it would have moved the resource that was on FCO1 to FCO2. So we can now install, reboot, and so on. So once again, if we go and look at the roles, we now see they're all on FCO2. But again, once this node finishes, it'll move that resource back to FCO1. But it's doing it all for us. We're not doing anything. And now this will just carry on. And it's going to probably run it twice because it's the same patches that applied to FCO2. So it's shutting it down. And what I've actually done is I've opened this tool on my local machine so I can just keep track of this while it's running. 
So now it's all finished. So this is my local version. You can see it scanned twice. It restarted it, then it scanned a third time. There were no more updates. So it's finished. The updating run was successfully completed on both nodes. And the role was moved back. So now that first one is back on FC01. I can check there's no more patches. I can actually do the preview updates for this cluster option. And now it's gonna go and do that scan again, but it's gonna find there are no updates. I can run a report on those last update runs. So I'm gonna actually say, okay, generate me this report for the last month. And there's that single run I did. There was 58 updates. There are the updates that applied. And you can see none failed, none were canceled. And I can see it took one hour 40, basically. I can export that if I wanted to. Now I actually let it run overnight and this is me checking again in the morning. Now imagine this was a 64 node cluster. Maybe it takes a day to run. So this is really where the power of this comes. I mean, there were no actions performed during this on my part. I triggered it to run and nothing else. You can see here, I'm just running that readiness report, which you can do at any time to make sure everything's healthy and ready to go. But this really is a very, very simple process. Once you've configured this, you really can allow it to just go and look after itself. So that concludes this overview of cluster web updating. Thank you.